everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and we're turning the great strategy games. And now we're going to jump right back into Warplan Pacific. Uh, this is episode number 11. The game came out today. How exciting. I mean, can you imagine building a game like this and then it comes out? Uh, that's really something, you know, congratulations, congratulations to Alvaro Sousa and the team over at Slytherin. Uh, I think this is a good game. I really do. Uh, you know, we'll, again, I keep saying over and over, I don't mean to repeat myself or maybe I do <laughs> because I keep saying it, but the point is you don't know how the AI is going to react until you get to 1940, late 42 through 43 right and so is this an, a game you can play against the ai consistently i i don't know we'll see um you also don't know how the naval combat's all gonna work out i mean once we've got carriers all over the map that can move 24 hexes at a time and stuff that could get interesting <laughs> to say the least i have a feeling that there may be some turtling up strategies, right? I mean, if you're the Japanese in 1944, why would you send your carriers out at all? Because the U.S. can ultimately move like 48 hexes total uh, with two operation points uh, with massive carrier fleets. I, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm not there yet. I do think this will be a heck of a lot of fun uh, to play against another human. So... Uh, maybe maybe I'll do that with, uh, you know, if one of you guys get really good at the Allies, or heck, you don't even have to be good. That'd be better, right? I'll play the Axis. I hope you're terrible. <laughs> nah, no, no, no. Look at all this heavy rain. There's heavy rain all over the map, and there has been for quite some time. I mean, I, I guess maybe February of 1942 was a very, very rainy month because it has been heavy two dot rate to, you know two teardrops for the japanese but two raindrops out here at all times now last time we deployed our troops for the march first move uh if you don't remember exactly i didn't either i had to go back and look we got this new division the second division that came in here we could only put them at the uk african bases area uh, we could not put them in india which is probably where we actually really need them as you can see the japanese are pushing on to the indian subcontinent um the other thing we got was a uh, u.s gosh what did the U oh the u.s got a small core right so that's like 20 strength points it's two divisions uh i can't remember we put it up here somewhere maybe it was up in uh seattle maybe or no i put them in portland look at portland Portland representing with six on the combat effectiveness, a 20 of 20. We'll split that up eventually. I put it in here because it's, why not? I mean, we've got, you know, we've got uh, counters at all the other major cities on the West Coast. So I just put it in there. We'll move it. We'll get it out when we eventually have transports. So that was the deployment this turn. Let's go look at the combat log. And we really want to look at last time, right? So let's look at the last move. Uh, a more partisan activity just west, like southwest of Peking. Uh, if they haven't cut that rail yet, those aren't good partisans. And I don't even know, you know, how do you rate partisans? But it's like, holy smokes, they keep hitting this hex over and over. Let's cut some rail. Um, more partisan activity there, just south of Peking. And then we have some west of Nanking. So we've got all kinds of provincial capitals in China, you know, with partisans about uh, partisan activity north and a little west of Nanking. And then we had land combat. Okay, so this was the first land combat last time. Uh, the Japanese have a nice six combat effectiveness unit. Moving back here, we've got a cavalry unit that really is good for its movement points, not so effective on the defense. Um... We've got this counter. I'd much rather they'd be dealing with this, but I think that retreated out of here. 19th Army Group. I pre No, that's 2nd Army Group. That's 19th Army Group. They knocked us all the way back across the river. Now, you know an attack is pretty dang strong when it knocks you over a river. Uh, we did have a little bonus here for the hills. You know, we were in the hills. Okay, the hills uh, tell no secrets. Uh, zero, 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 zero. Nobody took a strength hit, but we did have to retreat. Okay. Um, then we had a land combat down here. What was this? Oh, we shot. Wow. 
We had an army shatter. Now we have ringed Changsha, and we tried to cut this unit off, and we will do so again. Uh, but it hit here. We were in the forest, 111, but yeah, I mean, we just shattered. And that happens when you have greater than 7 to 1 odds. Uh, your unit could completely shatter. You hate to see it, but what are you going to do? You can't double stack units or triple stack them. So if you, yeah, I mean, all of these units are kind of that same weakness, right? We got a one, a two, a two. I mean, they're an eight. So if they really want to come at it, they're going to come at it. Um, we also shattered down here at Kota Baru, but these were those uh, garrison units. They were completely out of supply. That that was inevitable. That was inevitable. Okay, so we had a, uh, what happened here? The 40th Division, so one of these Japanese divisions up here that looks like it's now taken off a little bit, uh, attacked this unit, which happens to be the Reserve Army. It's just called Reserve. We should go rename that into something fun, like, uh, you know, I don't know, General So's Reserve Army or something. Uh, defending units, uh, plus 139. They had some entrenchment. They had some forest. I like both of those things on the defensive. Holds! And then they lost one to the land, one strength. Um, that's one thing I've wondered about this game. I mean, some of these units have massive strength, and you're not seeing a lot of counter losses. What you do see is when it's greater than 8 to 1, they sh or 7 to 1, I should say, they shatter, so they're just no more. But as far as, like, uh, you know, taking a strong unit and trying to whittle it down... It, it seems very hard in this game because they, these strength points do not get lost. I mean, even in cases like this, they lost one. Okay, we didn't lose any in what should have been a really big battle. I mean, this is an army group. That's a whole division. Um, they also had a brigade in here. So, you know, they brought air assets. So, I, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how that plays out. Um, they also did it again. They tried the same old trick. Get out of here, Shimamura Sadaamu. Uh, not working. Not working where we play. And then they, well, they tried it a third time. Okay. Well, every time we repulsed it uh, a fourth time. Excellent. And then this, this was the other garrison unit. That's just gone. Audio. See ya. Okay. Uh, actually, let's go back to that and see what's going current. This is just, you'll always see the partisan activity that happened during the Japanese turn. Okay, uh, I'm glad that, I'm glad our partisans are, you know, helping our war effort. Let's go look at the reports. Uh, Chinese 16th Army Group shattered, we knew that. 28th Mixed Brigade in India and 8th Mixed Brigade both shattered. Uh, fleet has no supplies, okay? Fleet has no supplies. I'm pretty sure we already moved those into port. We'll go look. U.S. has low oil stockpiles. Mm, yeah, I know. I know. Um, we're building up strength on the land. Now, I've determined that this is total strength points. That's what you see here, okay? So, 49 on the land with the U.K., they are building up. We put another division down, and we're also, you know, doing reinforcement to the divisions already on the map. So they are jumping up here. They've got 29 in naval. They still don't have a lot of ships out there. Uh, anyway, uh, 99. Now, this almost has to be... Hmm. Let's go look. Let's go look. Uh, I, I thought that those were strength points, but if we look here... Oh, they are strength points, right? Because I was thinking, well, gosh, the UK, the Prince of Wales is much stronger than that, but not really for strength points. It's incredible on the surface. It's a 12. Hell, I thought this game was measured on 0 to 10, and this thing's a 12. That's how good it is. Um, nobody else, you know, is generally close to numbers like that, but it is, so it's strength points. Uh, let's go back up here then. And we see our forces. UK has 49 land strength points, 29 naval, 99 merchant marines, 9 escorts. Okay, good to know. Uh, Japan, 1274. Well, that's why we're getting routed a bit. Uh, we're building them as fast as we can. We're reinforcing as fast as we can. But ultimately, this is the big bully on the block. The US start got to start getting stuff up here. Now, if you look at the naval... Um, we're not nearly as far behind as you would think. I mean, if you put the UK and the US together, you know, we're what, like 112? I'm no mathematician, but I think that's what that adds up to. 112 to 149, 
throw two Australian in there. And, uh, yeah, it's not, not as far as you may think. What about the air? 71, Japan's got 230. Okay, we got a little bit in China. Now, that's the Flying Tigers. The Aussie, Aussies got a little bit. India's got a little bit. New Zealand, okay, you get it. You get the idea. Uh, casualties. Now, I think this must be strength points. And it looks like we're doing a fairly decent job because this, a lot of this has to be in China. And China's lost 71 strength points as a casualty. Japan's lost 64. I'll take that. I mean, the Dutch East Indies, they surrendered after losing 10. Uh, they've lost 51. We have, you know, inflicted some damage in India, but most of this is in China. Uh, they lost 12 in the air. Okay, excellent. Uh, 10. We lost most of this at the U.S. Naval uh, at Pearl Harbor. We're building some back up. We have lost a Merch Marine. UK's lost five and three escorts. Okay. We could go look at all of our units. Now, you know I like to go look at the subs. Uh, I don't know why. I've just got an affinity for these long-range subs. Where's the pike now? Okay, they're still sitting out here in Indonesia. The Indonesian lane, is the, as this is called. I kind of want to put them out back up here, and I think we will. I think we will. I think this is where most of the Japanese shipping is going, or at least it should be. Let's go look at this unit. It's got four days of uh, supply left, so let's put that one there. And then this is the skipjack. He's got seven days left. Hallelujah. Um, that might be a little close. Why don't we, I don't know that anything's up there. Let's put him right there. So they're just going to sit here and try to take out some convoys. Uh, and this is how I like to do it. When I see things, let's just move it now. We'll go back around uh, and check things out. Oh, if you look at the carriers, you can see the, the air power here in blue in brackets that's six so they, that's their like uh is that air to air or naval Ooh, now i don't remember now we oh we did move two of our where are they yeah we moved two of our carriers down to suva which i thought was a bold move my friends uh six for carrier planes but let's look what that actually equates out here to um, you see mainly air things here because these are essential. Just think of uh, the carriers in this game as floating airfields. I mean, that's what they are. They're, they're not really going to attack anything on the surface. They can defend themselves on the surface a little bit. I mean, they've got a fort, but this is all like defense. Um, they're really floating airfields. So we've got five air. Con that's not great. Gosh, you would think with. They would have a little better fighters, but we're good in the naval air. Uh, not so good strategic, uh, not so good tactical. I wish that air combat was a little higher. Is it? Uh, that was the Yorktown. Let's look at the Saratoga. Um, it's going to be the same, I guess. Carrier operations 42. Let's make sure in our advancements for the U.S., we've got uh, carrier operations just jacked to the limit. Uh, we've got it at five. We've got interceptors at six. Okay, there's not, you know, doesn't look like there's going to be a huge advantage to either one. That's, you know, it's fine. That's fine. A six or a five. It's law of diminishing returns out there. Um, keep looking through the reports here. Okay. So, oh, we looked at those two. So I like to do the subs because they're easy to forget because they're not in port. So we did the pike and the skipjack. Let's check out the grayling. It's being repaired in Sydney. Uh, that's what we want. Okay, and we have lost a sub. Uh, headquarters, okay, fine. Uh, sunk ships, we haven't had any named ships sunk. Uh, we did lose, I, I'm surprised it doesn't list, it doesn't list the submarine group that we lost, but it doesn't. So, okay, it doesn't list submarines. That's fine. Uh, we do, <laughs> now we got some comment points last time. And, you know, we, we, <laughs> We can create a communications unit with 40. The Brits now have 39, but the U.S. Ha oh, they do have 40. Let's just do one of these to see how it works. Now, last time, we you have to have over 60, I think, to do the code breaking or whatever the hell it was. Uh, it was going to give us like enhanced uh, recon or detection level for several turns. It failed. It failed, unfortunately. But let's create a communications intelligence unit. 
Okay, we built that. Is that now on the deployment screen? No. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's going to come out March 29th. How does that work? Well, you put it on the map like a counter and you get for a certain, I think it's 10 hexes around it. Um, you get enhanced intelligence. I kind of like that, right? We're going to be able to place that on the map. So that'll happen on March 29th. That could come in very handy if the Japanese are thinking about attacking Australia. Uh, that could definitely come in handy, right? Um, so that's the war panel. I mean, we're not declaring war on anybody else. We got enough of a war on our hands right now as it is. But you can come here and see the victory points, how many you have, how many you need for various victory levels. Okay, we're, uh, we need a few more. Let's put it that way. Advancements. Uh, really, at this point, I've got it locked in the way I want until something advances. And it won't for a while, right? I mean, this is the closest one I see. 117 days on long-range subs for the U.S. Uh, U.K., yeah, we have nothing close to that. Soviet Union. And, and look up here and see if you have any unassigned that you can put down here. Soviet Union's a long ways away. Uh, China's progressing pretty well. They've got no new ones, but we're building up their uh, ground units. So, you know, assault and anti-tank ones. So it's really all you can do. They don't have much else or, or shouldn't have much else. Uh, but the U.S., this will be interesting. And this will happen automatically to our submarines. Uh, they will automatically upgrade to the 42 level. If we go down here and click on this in 1942, we get an extra surface point. Uh, that's it. Now, oh, shoot, boy, I was I was hoping it was a little better than that. <laughs> I was like, I was so excited, and then I was like, oh, well, actually, we just get an extra sur. Well, hey, every little bit helps, right? Um, so that's the war panel. That's advancements. Nothing else to look at there until once something clicks over to the next one, right? Let's look at our convoys and see how we're doing here. The Brits have 48 merch marines. Okay, good to know. We stopped uh, exporting oil for the UK, which hurt, but they've lost almost all their oil production. So we're sending five, nine, and two production to Australia, India, and New Zealand, respectively. That's fine. We can't send any more. You can only send like 25% of your total output per turn. That's not that. That's the stockpile. But if we look at the total output, output per turn on the build, we can only do like 25% of that. We have maxed that out. And they're taking care of the former colonies, or at this point, uh, in some cases, still a colony. In some cases, not a colony, but former colony. Uh, so they're sending out what they can. Uh, U.S. has more to send. Unfortunately, okay, we do have one more merchant marine ship. Uh, we've got one extra. Okay, interesting. Um, do we want to do more? I don't think so. The U.S. oil stockpile is just horrific. Uh, it's just terrible. It's terrible, I say. Uh, Soviet Union can't do anything unless they get in the war. Uh, China's obviously not going to be sending anything to anyone. Uh, they need all of the resources they can get. They're actually doing okay right now. 109 and 26. Uh, hell, I don't know. They could send some of that oil somewhere, maybe. They don't really use oil. They've got nothing but infantry troops, and those tr infantry troops are not motorized. And so you don't need a lot of oil to oil up your humans, <laughs> you know? So they've got a lot of oil left. All right, uh, UK's got 103 in the stockpile. They could technically build something, I believe. Uh, they could build another division. Maybe something we want to do. They could build, if we go over to support, they could build another escort, which would be 40. It's not the worst idea I've ever heard. It takes forever for these things to build. Um, we don't need any more merch marines, that's for sure. Uh, you know, uh, planes are expensive. The U.S. is going to be building the planes. I kind of want the U.K. to build build units real i say units i mean planes are units but i really want the uk to focus on either submarines destroy i mean they can also do battleships right that's what the that's what the brits are known for their big battleships um 
but probably really infantry divisions. Okay, so we're going to do this West African division. It'll take 60 days, but we're going to go ahead and purchase that. We're going to do anti-tank. We've been making these defensive units. So we built another infantry division for the UK. Uh, right, okay, and so next time we should have about 87. We could probably build another one. Let's go to the U.S. U.S. got 394 in the stockpile. Let's start building up this Air Force and let's get advanced all the way. We could be a cheapskate and make it a 1939 Interceptor Division, but we're not going to do that. Or group, I should say, fighter group, the fourth U.S. fighter group. Let's purchase that. I want air superiority and I want it now. Uh, let's purchase it. Air superiority group built. Now that's going to... You know, obviously uh, take our stockpile way down, but I mean, the U.S. is just ah, just killing it. You know, their economy score keeps going up. So whatever production points they have is times by 1.63. So their economy keeps getting, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. So we could actually go in here, I think, and build an infantry division if we want. So let's do it. Uh, there we go. And now the U.S. production machine is ramping up. What we need are escorts, though. Uh, the Soviet Union could build something if we wanted them to, I believe. No, the armies are too... No, it's all too expensive, really. We could do a submarine group, but, I, you know... The, the Soviets aren't coming into the war, so we could sit here and talk about that all day, but it, it, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, infantry army. This is what we need. We need Chinese infantry army. 1939, this is as far as they go, boys. Uh, 109 next, but the, we're doing a lot of upkeep, trying to keep those strength points high. The problem is, I actually think this is kind of a bad investment. I'll tell you why. Because these units shatter too easily. So if they're facing better than 7 to 1 odds, it doesn't matter how many hit points they have or strength points. So I'm actually going to kick this down a little bit. I think what we need to do is spam units. And so let's do 20, okay? I mean, that'll keep them okay. Uh, let's do 20 and see how that goes. Because I actually just want to build a lot of units. I, I Reinforcing what we have sounds good, but if they shatter, you lose all those points. And that's what's been happening, right? Because they just, they're, they're disintegrated off the map. And that's just something I've, I've now kind of taken to heart is like, oh, wait a minute, we're just wasting all of that reinforcement. Um, the Aussies, the Australians, uh, the Vegemite eaters. Good day, mate. <laughs> Crocodile hunter. These Aussie Aussies want to build units and let's do it. We're going to purchase another division. Okay. Can they maybe do their own transports? Should they do their own train? Probably. Uh, we'll have to go look at the build queue. I don't think they really have much. Uh, 59. Oh, God. You know, these Canadians. Nothing pisses me off like a Canadian. Uh, those people. They're too nice. Uh, communist China. The commies. Well, they got a 90 stockpile. Why haven't they, uh, like, shared that with everybody? Okay, I've made that joke a few times. Never mind. Uh, they've got a 90 stockpile. They need... 180 to build an army which is all they're going to be doing india where are you india 37 and we're upkeeping too much here now see i cranked this up before because logically you would think we want to reinforce the units we have on the map but for india and china i don't think that's true i think you spam units because they shatter too easily so we're going to start uh taking that to its greatest effect how much do we need 78 so we not quite next time but at the time after that maybe we can build one uh new zealand damn you holding the america's cup how dare you if you're not a sailing fan that's the greatest honor in sailing uh the kiwis have been winning it even though it's named after america how dare you know that we don't like that here in america <laughs> we like to be the best no it's fantastic yeah uh, ever since they got those catamarans running those kiwis are tough to beat on on the sea uh, okay, 
Uh, they've got a 41 stockpile. Of, you know, okay. We'll eventually build a unit here uh, with 78. We've got one on the upkeep. They do six each time. We've been sending them some stuff. That's what's building up the stockpile. Uh, the Philippines is a lost cause. Can we almost build something, though? Almost! Hey, I think next turn we could put another unit out there just to annoy the Japanese. So that is build. We've done convoys. I think we've done it all. Let's look at convoys one, <laughs> one more time. Does anybody have an escort left? Let's try it. No! I'm just going to keep hitting that button until an escort shows up. Uh, but no, we don't. The, the, you know, the Brits have a lot more merch marines, but there's really no place to send them. Uh, we've, we've had so much of our stuff taken already. All right, let's get over to the U.S. and talk about what we can move around, what we can't. We cannot move any of this stuff. Uh, that's just kind of like long story short. We need transports, and we don't have them yet. Midway's still sitting here. That's fine. Uh, we've got these units on uh, the Hawaiian Isles. Now we're in Pearl Harbor. Uh, the game calls it Honolulu. Okay, if you want to go that way, Alvaro Sousa, uh, I would call it Pearl H out here. But yes, it is Honolulu, technically. U.S. has 26, sitting there with 26 oil. Uh, let's go look at this again. You can see it's producing 20 each time, but it's taking 17 in upkeep because we've got so many things that require oil. So what can I do about it? I mean, uh, you know, we've got everything in port for the most part. Uh, we did move those carrier groups. That probably like ate up a lot of oil last time. So hopefully next time we'll have, we'll have a great deal more. We've got the U.S. 24th Division here. We still have the Lexington Enterprise, Nevada, uh, you know, Battleship Division. So, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's support craft. New Orleans Cruisers, 14th DD, 13th DD, 12th DD. Wow, okay. Uh, 11th DD. <laughs> We've got a lot of destroyers and cruisers. We don't need to build any of those, I don't think. Not in the, in the long or the short term. We will send them out with the carriers. Now, you can only put nine naval groups together and i think that you can't bunch more than three carriers together i'd have to check that one again but this whole group could go out as one as one naval task force uh, but these are the actual groups you can unclick them you can click them uh, you can take out what you want or what you don't want um i have these on fleet that's the way we would want it if we ever did take them somewhere. We've got our air superiority group here over the Hawaiian Isles, and that's good because we need air support. Uh, and it's got an air combat level of eight. Not fantastic. They're only 1940s. That's why we are researching that like mad. Like mad, he says. Uh, South Pacific, let's go down to New Zealand while we're here. I would love to go down to New Zealand. Uh, we're building this group back up. If we can, if we can, let's go to the New Zealand reinforce and upgrade. You know what? Uh, I don't want 11. Can I just do, what do I have to do? Shift? No. Control? Whoa, not 50. Oh, does this only go up in 10? Or do I have to like right click it or something? Zero, 10. I, I don't want that many. I don't want that many. Well, let's do 10, actually. I really don't want that many, necessarily. But this is the only thing we have on priority reinforcement. They've got nothing else to reinforce. So let's reinforce that the best we can. Um, we've got this destroyer. Oh, yeah. This is the one that we had out here in the convoy lane, helping the convoys. It is now out of supply. So we'll take that back into Auckland. Uh, we're going to keep these U.S. units, our uh, naval units here, sitting where they are. We've got uh, out at Suva. We've got them at Nomaya. We've got them at Pago Pago. I actually like all that. I like the uh, the idea that I've got going here. Uh, is it going to be successful? I don't know. I've never played the game before, uh, but I certainly hope so. So we've got a destroyer squadron there. We've got are two carriers because suva is a level six port i was amazing over that last time we've got uh 
cruiser, destroyer, cruiser, battleship, battleship, and two carrier. That's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice fleet if you can get it. Uh, the U.S. can do those kind of weird things. Uh, the Houston is sitting down here. It is a cruiser squadron. It actually needs to repair. It's sitting on one of three. So let's put that in Sydney with what we have in Sydney. Sydney, Signing, that's what it sounded like I said, uh, which includes the Canberra, which is an Australian vessel, uh, or its squadron, and the Grayling, which is a submarine squadron that's also here to repair. So all three of those are repairing in a level five or above shipyard. I guess I could have taken the Houston to Suva and met up here because it's big enough to handle that. Um, I don't think there's anything else to do out here. I, I think all of that, is, all of the action is really in India and China right now. Um, you know, I would love to do something with Port Moresby, but we, we there's nothing to do. Uh, we've got these ships here. They're in for repair. We've got the 14th here, but it's fully repaired. It's just sitting here in Brisbane in case there's a problem of some sort. In Townsville, we've got the Colorado. Okay, it's a battleship. Uh, we do have this Australian first RAAF. I was ten I'm tempted to take this to Port Moresby. The reason I'm not doing it is the Japanese have planes here. They now, from the best I can tell, air superiority has a range of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think they can reach us here. That being said, let's actually go back to the Hawaiian Islands really quickly. And let's look at our air superiority group and just make sure that's true. Okay, that's a six. Let's go back to Townsville and look at this. It's a 10. Okay, now let's zoom down here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight. Now that looks like a fighter to me. Am I wrong? This looks like a, so that's an air superiority group. I'm almost certain. I don't think it has a range long enough to get to Moresby. So maybe we do move it up here, but I am building this up. This was, a, I think, a 5 of 20. Let's keep letting it repair, but if the Japanese get any ideas about landing here, let's get it up here for some tactical bombing support. Uh, we need those transports, folks. It's, it's that simple. We need the transports. We have an infantry division here in Darwin, and we have the U.S. This came out of the Philippines. It's also a tactical group. Oh, this one's actually got a better air combat. So this is close support 42. What is this? This is a naval air training 41. Okay, well, that's interesting because that it's got crappy naval air. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, hmm. This is a good unit right here. It's up to 11 and 20. It's a United States unit, right? It's USA. Um, we've got it on priority repairs. I like that. We've got this over in Darby. It was either this or Port Hedland. I've just got it in Darby now because it's on the main road to Darwin. I mean, that, I don't know. Is that a good idea, bad idea? I have no idea. Uh, these are, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are our new, um, we just deployed these last turn. The Ramillies and the Deroiter. Okay. Surface, it's a 10. Nice. Nine defense. Love it. Destroyer group with the Deroiter. I mean, it's light cruiser, but it, you know, it's an anti-sub outfit, really. Let's put these in Darwin right away. Uh, Darwin's only a level two port. Um, that's interesting that it's only a level two. But okay, we're going to put that in there. Help us defend Darwin if we can. I don't think there's a whole lot going on over here either. I mean, there is, but we just can't get it off of the uh, African coast. We have this out here that's helping. Uh, let's actually put that back in port. It's got a, you know, it's out of supply now. So we'll put that in there. I like it. I like at least one to be out of here to buff the anti-sub uh, capabilities. So we've got... Uh, you know, the Hermes, which is a light carrier. We've got a battleship, battle crew. I mean, the Revenge, the Repulse, and the Prince of Wales are a badass group on the surface. 
You've got 12, 10, and 10 on the surface. So if the Japanese want to bring a surface fleet over here, we can certainly do a little damage. We can do that dance. Um, let's take the Cornwall out here then. We'll put it right there. It gives you a little buff to the sub hunting. I, honestly, I think it should be a little greater, but that's just me. Uh, they, you know, Alvaro really wanted to abstract the convoy stuff and so it's really all right here how many escorts do you have if you have 10 you're protecting the lane if you have less than that you're taking chances now generally this can protect up to five merch marines so even with a nine you're protecting 45 i th i don't think that the uk is even sending that much through the indian ocean now the escorts can get destroyed, and when that happens, it can open up an attack on the Merchant Marines. Just keep that in mind. Uh, we've got nothing left in Java, as much as that pains me to say that, we don't. Um, oh, yeah. Well, now we come to India. Well, we've got the, we got the first IAF out. It is looking much better. It's got a strength of 18. We've got it on full support. We've got it on bomb armies, if it can. We've got this unit here, which is not bad, the 20th Infantry Division. It's got a 10-10. Unfortunately, if both of these hit it, it's going to shatter. So it doesn't matter if it's 10-10. and 10. Uh, So we're going to keep putting this bad boy in reverse and get back to... Ooh, see, we're going back to like... Better terrain for... Now, this is jungle. I like that. Um, gosh, he can go a long ways. Okay, let's back it up. Now, can this go to active status? It can. Okay, so I've got these two units. I've got this unit. This, can you go to active status? You can. All right, cool. Uh, but that uses up all their points. Um are their operation points, right? So I'm going to sit these here like this for now. Uh, I don't really know what else to do. This is the Indian 44th Brigade. It's also garrison. Okay, I just turned that to active status. So, you know, we're eventually going to have to have that come up here. We may have to rail this unit out of Bombay. Hell, maybe we just do that now. Why are we even messing around? Let's get this up here. Oh, hold on. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to click on the headquarters because the headquarters can definitely go backwards. And then I'm going to take the one the one in DACA and move it back there. Actually, I don't want it to go that far back. Let's move it up. That way they're both in command. There we go. Do you see that? It's five hexes. Uh, now let's take this unit in Bombay and rail it to Chittagong. Okay, we got another unit over here. We also have one in Madras, but at some point, if I were the Japanese, I'd just come straight across to India and say, oh, wow, that's weird. There's no Indian troops in India. Uh, now, we do have this in Delhi, and I do think maybe we railed this up here somewhere. Maybe here. All right, just so we have a little more on the outskirts here. Now, we do have... Uh, something here in Jaffna, and we have a unit in Colombo, but again, I mean, it's not not great. AI is playing, playing it pretty smart. Okay, now what are we going to do? Well, with this unit, I think I'm just going to go up here and try to trap him again. Now, that may get shattered, but I'm trying to take his attention off of Changsha. So he just got supply. You saw that connection there. How much did he get? Well, I don't know. Probably, well, now that's a nine for us, but this is our supply center. That's not his. He can't draw off that. He's got his own supply numbers that are coming out of their supply center, right? And so I don't think it could be that great. It's got to be like a two or a three out here. It can't be the full nine. So we're going to go there and then, hmm. I think I want these two to maybe switch places. Let's put you in town. Let's move you. Well, I, I needed him up here. Huh. What's he going for? He can't do anything out there. Let's cross the river 
and help here. We can't lose Chung. I mean, Chung King, Cheng Sha is so important, but you can't, I mean, you just can't lose Chung King. Uh, it's too important. Um, these all look fine. It's like we've got way too much stuff over here. But I guess if the Indians get overrun, we need stuff over here. Uh, this unit could probably go somewhere uh, if I wanted to get crazy. Do I want to get crazy? I don't know. Um, we could also start, like, threatening the Japanese flank, couldn't we? Why don't we move him down a little? That gets, he's got the same supply there as he would otherwise. Wow, this we can move all the way down here. Okay, I mean, we might as well. We're not being threatened right there, so that's okay. We're trying to cut this off. We'll see if that works. We've fallen back in good order here. Now, this is not in good supply. I would rather that be in good supply. Although it is protected for a cross-river attack, I would maybe like to get this cavalry unit. Yeah, let's back that up and let's bring that unit in here. It's stronger. This unit I'll back up to there and I'll bring that one there. Okay, that puts them all in a little better supply situation. Barely, but it does. And then this guy needs supply. They're coming straight this way, it looks like. But uh, let's put him there and like keep... A, eh, do I want to do that? Let's. Uh, I can't undo it now. I'm next to a Chinese unit. Okay, let's just make sure we're not putting anything at threat here. Now see, the Japanese have said, screw it. I don't want to mess with these uh, communists up in the hills. Uh, that's good advice for everyone. Um... All right, he's coming there. He's got everybody under command. He should. Now, this unit could try to go sneak sneak and get our headquarters, but such are the chances you take. All right, I think we moved everything. Let's run the turn. Have we? Have we? Let's, let's just do this because it may be fun to look around. Okay, these are all in China. Oh, the Flying Tigers. How are we doing here? We're doing great. We're doing great. So they're on full support. They should be doing complete air superiority here. They have a range of six. This should be a 10. I'm sorry, folks. That should be a 10, and their experience should be like a 75. Their effectiveness should always be 100. Those Flying Tigers can mess it up. Believe me. Um, Cheng Tu... I mean, we've got this unit back here. It's a full infantry army. What is this? Why is this not repairing? I don't, I, I don't know. Let's put it on priority repair. That's a full army. I don't want to, you know, we may as well build that up, run it to the front. These Marines are wearing down. They're only at a 5 of 15. Ninth Army headquarters. Yes. See, we, I mean, we've basically moved everything. Just making sure. Oh gosh, Soviet Force. That's a nice color of red. I would like this game. I wish it would do procedurally generated maps and you could just play other people with like resource points. Uh, that would be like Advanced Tactics Gold, only a lot prettier. Uh, maybe they'll maybe he'll make that game someday. I'm gonna mention that to him uh, the next time there's like a live stream or something. I'll be like, can you please just have your system? your game system, procedurally generate maps, give you so many production points, you buy your armies, and you have, you know, like weird victory locations, um, and let it go. We don't have to play an AI. We could play each other. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Okay, uh, in turn, yes. It's going to be middle of March. Now we've destroyed one Japanese unit. That's about as <laughs> that's that's been our big success. We're doing fine, actually. I mean, we couldn't have been doing much better. Uh, there's only so much you can do when you can't move your troops around with transports. So we're doing the best with what we have. We're just trying to slow them down. Luckily, we did get a lot of rain and oh, ooh, ooh, who's that? I didn't like that. Hopefully they don't sink our sub. It's still here. 
That's weird how they got onto us there, though. I thought we were we're in raider mode. Well, I'll be damned. They sunk another submarine. Now, how did... Okay, I'm going to just have to explore more how that could have happened. Those those are light carriers. So if they spot us, they can come bomb us with their planes. They can't do a surface attack, but we've now lost two submarine groups. Uh, okay, we're building more. That's the advantage of playing the U.S. You can only always build more stuff. Uh, let's get Henry Ford cranking out shit uh, in Detroit. All right, they're just kind of moving about, moving here, moving there. I mean, they've got a lot of units that if they use, like, uh, you know, in any kind of concentration, I don't think we can stop. But if they bring them all up here to China, which I kind of hope they do, that's fine. China can sort of fall, really, or they can take most of it. Uh, but that buys us time. If they're not messing around with the uh, Australians, so that we still have that U.S. Australian corridor, we can we can recover. We can recover even from losing China, but we may as well bloody their nose as much as we can. Now I did say I was going to speed this up. Because I know somebody's going to watch one of these videos and say, I can't play this game. It takes too long. Uh, no, it can go much faster than this. Just keep that in mind. Uh, are they going to... Please don't shatter this unit. I've, I've now figured out the Chinese and Indian units. You just spam them. You don't reinforce them. You just build as many as you can. Uh, because they shatter way too easily. Well, I say way too easily. I mean, it's realistic. Uh, that's not a... That's not a critique on the game. Uh, when I say way too easily, I'm saying historically they did as well. And so, you know, that's not maybe fair as fair to the Indians. Uh, the Chinese also, I mean, those guys on the ground, uh, half the time they were throwing rocks at people. You know what I mean? So uh, take that for what it's worth. It's not like they're they're not, you know, good. They're not good people or something. They just didn't have what it took to fight a, a modern war machine like the Japanese war machine out here. One thing I do like about this game is I can now play a turn in about 45 minutes and by the time we execute this uh, turn or resolve this turn, it's going to be at like 50 minutes. That's perfect. And that's perfectly manageable for a lot of people. You know, you can play a turn of the game, go to work the next day, do whatever, go out to dinner with your wife or your girlfriend, whatever the case may be. And then you can play another turn the next night, you know, and it's not like War in the Pacific where you're like, gee, I haven't made it. I haven't completed a turn in three weeks. I feel like I've been working on the game a lot. Um, so, you know, that does have that, it does have that advantage. I'd be really curious why we lost that, how they got detection on that sub, but it could be that they're using their comment points, uh, that we've been talking about and they've, you know, quote unquote, broken our code a little bit. So they have enhanced detection levels. It's certainly possible. Um, man, we're very lucky. Like I said, heavy rain in China that can only help us. That can only help the defender. Okay, that's the end of the turn. Convoy attack versus Japan route. Well, maybe that's how they got detection on it. Of course, the Pike uh, squadron got nothing. We have not hit one of their escorts or one of their merchant marines yet. We tried it again with the uh, skipjack. Got no luck there. And then the skip, skipjack was sunk. Eh, our submarines got to improve, although that's very realistic. The U.S. Sub, submarine crew was disgustingly bad at the start of the war. Um, not their fault. 
not their fault. I mean, they had bad torpedoes. Uh, the Valiant Barbecue Squad, or is that Battleship? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm hungry. Let's see where they can deploy. I got a feeling it's African bases. Yep, right there, which I'm going to I'm gonna assume is Cape Town. Okay, so the Valiant is out there. Very, very nice. Um, what do we want to do with the Valiant Battleship Squad? Maybe I'll go put them in, like, Perth. We don't really have anything in Perth, right? So let's go out here. That's one operation point. They can't quite get to Perth. We're going to leave them there for now. Uh, I don't know that they're going to do much good, but I just kind of want to cover that. Now, deployment. Let's go back. What does the U.S. have to deploy? The 24th Division. Okay, so let's flip over here to the West Coast. Uh, right, where can we put them? Where can we put... Oh, wait a minute. Does the 24th Division come in someplace else? Or have I not hit deploy yet? <laughs> I hadn't hit deploy yet. Gosh, I got all excited. I was like, man, this 24th Division. All right, we'll put them down near LA. Uh, we're going to get a, a sub to replace the one we just lost next turn. We're going to get the Hornet, another carrier. And... Ooh, not quite next turn. It's the turn after that. We'll get the transports. Uh, what's the build look like? Uh, the Brits have 72. U.S. has 242. Oh, wow. A lot of the upkeep. But, you know, the U.S. and the Brit units don't really shatter. They're strong enough, and they're like 41, 42 in a lot of cases, that they won't shatter. So they're worth the reinforcement. Um we're learning very quickly that the Chinese forces and the Indian forces maybe aren't worth the reinforcement. Um, that's just something we got to deal with. Uh, let's go back to the deployment screen and just see if anybody else has anything else to deploy. I, I'm, I'm just praying that somebody does. Uh, supply trucks in China. No. Hey, there's an Aussie. Aussie. Um, Infantry division, where can we put them down? Well, we could put them down out here or out here. Interesting. Okay, well, we want them up here in the north. I'll tell you that much. So let's put them down there. And then, oh, nice. So we get another one coming up and then another one. So in April, we'll get two more. Let's take you. Nope, all their, op we don't have any, op oh, we can, oh, we can rail him somewhere. But he doesn't have any operation points, right? Yeah, we could take him up here, but he doesn't, he can't move. So if we get off rail, uh, yeah, he can't move. Can he rail at all? I'll take him up by here if I could. I guess he can, but I really want him up by Darwin. We're, we've got to start stacking up here. We maybe, well, we actually should take something to Port Headland as well. Uh, we'll get off that, though. Um, deploy. We're just going to deploy each time before I sign off. That's Australia. Canada's got none. Uh, India. Hey, look at that. Two divisions in India. The tide has turned. Uh, can I put, where can I put him down? Deploy. Okay, I can put him down near Calcutta. I like it. Um, okay. Excellent. 20th division now. We can put him down up here as well. Uh, shoot, I don't know. Let's put him there. Okay. Now then. Oh, that makes things a little more interesting, huh? The Indians strike back. Excellent. Okay. We will contemplate all of this when we come back next time we've done our deployment so we'll get in we'll look at the combat log we'll figure out why we lost those subs uh and we'll go from there this has been strategy gaming dojo thank you guys so much for dropping by i really do appreciate it i hope you had fun i know i did uh talk to you next time adios